This Victorian monster clanks and bangs and screeches as it drops our boat 50 feet into the river below. We've arrived at the lift waiting area and we've been informed by a member of the CRT that they're having a bit of a problem with the lift. So, um, I mean, it's only just had a £450,000 refit um, and it's still going through its sort of trial period at the moment. But um, yeah, they've, they've got a bit of a problem with it. So, um, our 10.45 booking doesn't look like it's going to be going ahead. It may, may not even happen today. But, an hour and a quarter later, we got the go-ahead. We manoeuvred onto the aqueduct where narrowboat Triton John was waiting. Once alongside, we were given an instructional briefing by the CRT. And then the guillotine to the Kazon was lifted and together we edged forward. rain, the noise, the skeletal structure and the whole atmosphere was reminiscent of the film Alien. I must admit I half expected Ripley to join us. Clearly, the lift was having a few teething problems, and we remained motionless, hanging in the Kazon 50 feet above the Weaver for almost half an hour. At last, a clunk, and then the whine of motors, and we were gently lowered towards the river. This extraordinary Victorian structure was opened in 1875. Until then, salt was transshipped between the Trent and Mersey Canal and the river by men with wheelbarrows dropping salt into the four salt chutes and into the waiting barges on the river below. The air in the surrounding area was thick with salt dust. By 1904, there was serious corrosion of the hydraulic rams, and so by 1908, the operation system had been converted to electronic motors and pulleys and counterbalances. The lift operated successfully for another 75 years.
Six minutes later, we were at river level. But there was another problem. The Kazon gate won't lift. The reason is the water needs to be equalised with the river. It needs to be within two millimetres either way. So after several attempts and a further ten or so minutes, the weaver is in sight. We let Triton John exit first, and finally, 50 minutes after entering the lift, the Weaver navigation and freedom beckons. Despite the rain and despite the delays, this was a fabulous experience, one to be recommended. At no time did we feel anxious or frightened. Perhaps we were too much in awe of this spectacular structure. I mean, what a feat of Victorian enterprise and engineering. And all for the princely sum of five pounds. Why not join us next time for a trip along the truly stunning Weaver? And if you'd like to send a greetings card to a Tales from the Swans Neck subscriber, please check out our website for details. <laughs> <laughs>